Stan Brakhage was an experimental filmmaker who prominently made his work in the 60s and 70s. He truly was experimental, in that some of his films were moth wings glued onto frames of celluloid that would flash in front of you for three minutes. It's gorgeous and super annoying at the same time. Anyway, some of his films were one of the first things I was shown in film school back in Depression-era Philadelphia. I distinctly remember the experience of watching Window Water Baby Moving, a film he made about his wife giving birth to his child in all of its gloriously gruesome detail. Extreme close-up on baby head coming out of vagina level detail. Most of the kids in the classroom expressed vocally their discomfort. Some couldn't watch, and basically all, including me, complained after class about the pretentious quality of the films we were shown in this so-called school and continued making jokes about Stan Brackage until we began understanding a sliver of the medium and realized without admitting it consciously that we were stubborn and spoiled kids with little to no understanding of what pretension even means. This is all to say that I ran into the professor who introduced me to Stan Brackage this week. He was standing in a parking lot in the apartment complex, Toluca, as you know from the July 4th episode, as I was putting food in high school campers' rooms. We spoke, and he didn't recognize me, blaming it on my beard even though I had a patchier version of the same thing in college. The conversation was pleasant, but left me with a shameful aftertaste. I wasn't out there making films for a living. That would have made him proud despite not knowing who I was before the conversation began. I told you two weeks ago that I go out of my way sometimes to make it look like I'm legitimate, and here I am with Alan Barber, which is his name, feeling rather illegitimate. What have I accomplished since all this began? Hey, Dad. How are you? How was your trip? Good. Yeah. <laughs> nice place. Hey, it's cozy. Hey. <laughs> hey, man. You got sunburned. Yeah, I did. I got very sunburned. Hey, morning. Well, hey, what's up, man? What's up? Nothing much. Looking good. Thank you. The goatee is nice. Thanks. You have a lot of sunburn. Yes, I'm quite red. A little red over there. Oh, that's, is that hair? Yes. I thought it was just like Oreo stuff. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool. Oh, that's pretty good. Oh my god. 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 Chew them up and let it you done? Yeah. They uh, had one on, took the whole line, hooked the line, the sinker. Uh, I'm gonna go get another rig and go back for them. Oh, nice. Yep.
So, here, so start with this, okay? Come here. Yes? Yeah, I'm you not too close. Come on. No, it's very cool. Trust me. Come on. Okay, Come on. you got this? Yeah? He's go, teaching go, you go, a okay. dance. Okay, stop that. You have that, right? Now we're going to focus on the legs. Do this. Oh, I know. Let's just go into Do this. What is this? No, not as, not as shaky as that, okay? Okay, so let's try it, ready? Okay! Is it for Ready? Three, two, one. Go, go. Go slow. You got it. Oh my god. You got it. We're having a going up here and taking video. Going, going, going. Yeah. 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 I don't believe in anybody feels the way. I think it's this one. I think it's this one. <laughs> I think it's this one. It's real five. Hello? Hey. Whoa! Oh my goodness. Hey. Oh. How are you? Good. Oh, you grew. <laughs> Great. Hello. Good. Me too. Me too. Want a chocolate? Hey. <gasps> oh, thank you. Filming. Oh, stop filming. Yeah. I hate when you do this. You look great. <laughs> Thanks. Hi, Graham. Hey. <laughs> 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 Is that Louisville, Kentucky? My flights were both at night, so you won't get the beautiful cloud shots like season 3, day 64. I felt I could be more resourceful with my time if I flew some red eyes. Of course, I didn't take into factor the quality of sleep I'd receive these nights, but that was secondary to actually getting there. The man next to me snored loudly, but I was glad because I didn't have to be self-conscious of his awareness. The fear that my armpit smelled was on my mind almost constantly. In total, the two days at the beach were spent lounging, drinking, and making fun of Jack's so-called goatee. One night, my father admitted with some frustration that he'll never stop worrying about his sons. I can imagine. I spend every episode pointing out something wrong. This time out, it's my shame in not having produced a fully-fledged film career like the privileged college boy thought he deserved. That's stupid. I don't have to prove anything to my family, just no reason. They're my biggest supporters, unconditionally. I couldn't be luckier. I'm not saying this trip to the source was a revelation, but I do think it was a wake-up call. As my uncle Peter pointed out, and as Buckaroo Banzai says in a movie, wherever you go, there you are. I am here. I have arrived. Do I know this? <laughs>